Hi, I'm Amelia, and this is So Amelia, my channel where I talk about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to today's vlog, and <laughs> thanks for joining me. It's my first one, so I'm a little nervous, um, but I'm looking forward to sharing with you all of the things that I made in April. Just to mention that um, I know not all of you are interested in sewing for children and so I have timestamped the video below in the description box so please feel free to skip that section if you would prefer. I will start talking by talking about the things that I made for myself um, and then I'll move on to the things I sewed for my children this month. The first thing I'm going to talk about is what I'm wearing <laughs> and that is the Adrienne blouse by Friday Pratt & Company. So I'm sure you all know it well, it's this pattern here. Uh, it comes in sizes extra small to 4X. Uh, extra small is a bust of 32, waist of 24 and hips of 34. And 4X is a bust of 53, a waist of 46 and hips of 56, 57. Um, I found the sizing on this quite generous. Uh, I made a size L which fitted my measurements uh, in terms of the finished garment because I knew it was quite a fitted blouse. Um, but it ended up being slightly too big. Uh, it's fine and I'll wear it with skirts, um, waisted skirts and things, it looks fine, but I think I would prefer to try it again in a smaller size. So I will probably size down. Um, I have made a few Friday Pattern Company patterns since. This was actually the first one of theirs that I tried. And since then I've actually made the small in everything that I have made, which is slightly smaller than my um, sizes would suggest but I find their patterns are slightly more generous fitting and I prefer a slightly closer fit so I do tend to size down which I will do next time when I make this top again and I will make it again because I really love the fit of it I love the sleeves <laughs> and uh, I love the fact that um, it goes really well with skirts and under my pinnacle dresses so it's really versatile make um, I made it in a bamboo jersey from So Me Sunshine which was lovely to work with. Um, it's so soft to wear, which is really, really nice. And I'm looking forward to trying it out in the hotter weather because I think it's meant to be more breathable, which will be nice. Uh, but it's really cold here in England still. And so I have not yet had a chance to try it out um, in the warmer weather. Um, I do also find that I probably need to be more careful measuring the elastic on the shoulders next time. I'm not sure whether that's a size issue or whether I just should have made it slightly tighter. I thought it was fine but it does tend to fall off a little bit which is fine if you're going for the off the shoulder look but that's not something I tend to do very much so um, just a word of warning. It does say to do this in the pattern. The instructions are brilliant <laughs> but I just went off the measurements given in the pattern. They do say to check it. Um, which I didn't do. I just sewed it in so next time I'd probably take um, an inch or so off that elastic just to make it slightly firmer fitting across my shoulders. The next uh, thing I'd like to share with you is my Celia shirt, my Celia blouse by Coffee and Thread. And this is it here. You can see, well, sort of. <laughs> um, I will put up a picture, I hope. If I can work out how to do that, I will put up a picture and uh, you can see what it looks like on. Uh, it's by a pattern by Coffee and Thread, uh, and it is. I'll show you the line drawings. You can make it as. You can make it as either a long sleeve blouse, a short sleeve blouse, or the blouse that I made with the beautiful collar and the buttons down the front. So um, there are several different options. I chose to make the short sleeves with the collar and the buttons down the front because I. I'm really into colours at the moment and the big sleeves and I loved the sleeve feature on this. Um, so it has a sleeve that's made in several parts, I don't know if you can see it there, where you sew the gathering in here and then you attach the side of the sleeves together and then you join that whole um, head of the sleeve into the arm side. So it was a lovely, lovely one to make, I really enjoyed that. Um, making that and the pattern instructions were brilliant can really highly recommend those um, I was a bit nervous because I've not made a sleeve constructed like that before but it was really straightforward it is a fabulous pattern because it does come in two bust sizes so there are B cup and C cup 
B cup and C cup and then D cup options for each size, which is great. Um, it starts at a bust size of 30 inches, that's size zero, waist 32 and a half inches and hip 33 inches, going up to a size 22, which is a bust of 50 and a half inches, a waist of 22 inches and hips of 54 inches. So good sizing. I made the size eight, I think. Yes, I made a size eight, which fitted my finished measurements. Um, I have a much smaller um, bust and waist than I do hips. I have a bust of about 35 inches. My waist is 29 and a half inches and my hips are 42 inches. So um, I tend to need to either do small bust adjustments or narrow back adjustments on a lot of the patterns that I make. Um, so I did make a size 8 with this one because using the finished garment measurements I thought that would be fine over my hips, uh, especially as I'm tending to wear blouses tucked into skirts or um, under my purple dresses. So I thought that would be okay and it is, it's absolutely fine. In fact, I would probably size down <laughs> next time. I'd probably leave the sleeves the size they are, they're really nice on my arms, um, but I will size down um, or do a small bust adjustment or a narrow back adjustment because I just find that the back is a bit um, a bit big which is fine if I tuck it into skirts but if I was to wear it over a pair of jeans um, I would want it slightly more fitted across the back. What I could quite easily do with this version that I have made is I could quite easily put some darts in the back here, perhaps some like fisheye darts. Um, I think that's the right term. <laughs> um, just to bring it in a bit if I really want to, I could probably add those in at a later stage, but I absolutely love it. The fabric is from the Village Haberdashery. It's a Swiss Donk cotton. Uh, I really wanted to try like a embroidery on glaze, but I thought for a blouse it might be a bit see-through and I wasn't sure for my first version of this one how I would line it. So I wanted to make this in a slightly, um, yeah, more substantial cotton, but still with that look. So I went for the Swiss Donk cotton it's got a lovely little raised dot and then some sort of almost like lace work. Yeah, I do need to wear a slip underneath it or um, a vest just so that it's not indecent because <laughs> it is quite sheer. But that's fine. I often wear a vest underneath things anyway. Um, so yes, it's such a lovely fabric. I'm not sure if they have any left in stock, but I will link it down below if I can find it. The next make I'd like to share with you is my Kyalo wrap dress from Named Clothing that I made this month. Uh, I made it in a UK 10. The pattern itself I'm sure you're familiar with. It, it is, there are the line drawings. So I have bought the newer version which I think comes as a jumpsuit as well as a dress. I'm not sure I will ever make the jumpsuit but it's really nice to have the option um, should I want to do that. Um, when I bought the pattern I knew that I'd want to uh, shorten the jumpsuit and the dress because I prefer the look of things that sit around my knee and I wasn't sure that the narrowing at the hemline would really suit my figure and so but I have seen so many lovely versions on so many different figures but I knew that I would want to chop mine off at the knee so I did end up shortening the pattern by quite a substantial amount um, but other than that that was the only um, tweak that I made so the pattern itself comes in a UK 4 to a UK 28 and the UK 4 starts at a 29 and 7 8 inch chest and the UK 28 is a 52 and 3 quarter inch chest. I fell between two measurements. I fell between a size 10 and a size 12. Um, again, as I've mentioned previously, my top half is smaller than my bottom half and I knew that because of the uh, shape of this dress that I would have some flexibility in the waist and the hip area, especially in a soft jersey fabric. So I did choose to size down and I'm really glad I did because the fit is really lovely. So I made it in this gorgeous um, viscose jersey with the flowers and the different parallel lines. Uh, you can just see the tie coming out there. This is such an interesting construction. I really, really enjoyed it, um, especially because I made this one as a bit of a palette cleanser. I knew it would be quite a straightforward sew and um, I was making a few more complex patterns this month so it was quite fun to just sew something that was really lovely and quick and easy. I um, subscribed to the Sew Hayley Jane boxes. This month was actually my first box that I had received 
and I was so excited when I unwrapped it and saw this beautiful viscose jersey uh, and then I knew I'd wanted to try the Kyalo. I'm not sure how to say it <laughs> you can correct me in the comments below um, I knew I'd wanted to make the Kylo wrap dress for a long time and when I saw this in the box I thought it would be such a perfect combination. It is such a soft drapey jersey, I suppose because it's a viscose jersey, and I just thought it would work really well with the wrap of the dress. I'm really pleased with it. I, um, I shortened the sleeves as well actually, they're about a three quarter sleeve or just above the elbow sleeve, uh, which I think will be perfect for the spring summer uh, weather when it arrives. Um, the last thing I made for myself this month, or the last two things, <laughs> was the Hughes dress by the Friday Pattern Company. So that is this pattern here. I'm sure you've all seen it. Um, I actually put this one on my Make 9, so I knew I wanted to make it right from the beginning of the year, and since the weather is starting to warm up, I thought it would be the perfect time to try making these ones. So there are a couple of different options with the Hughes dress. So you can make it in this shorter version and there's the beautiful back there with the tie back detail which is just so nice. You can make it in the peplum shirt or you can make it in the longer, I think it's a midi version with pockets. Um, I kind of wanted something in length between these two options. I wanted something that hit just below the knees but didn't quite go to midi length. Um, I just prefer <laughs> something sort of closer to just below the knee. Um, and so I actually cut this skirt that I cut about I can't remember how many inches, it must have been like four or five inches off the bottom of the skirt um, to get the length that I wanted. Um, but I did not add the pockets. Um, the fabrics that I chose, I just didn't think they would quite work, but I'll speak about that in a minute. Uh, the Hughes dress goes from an extra small to a 7x, which is, um, I love Friday because they're so inclusive in terms of their sizing. But the, the uh, extra small is a 32 inch chest and the 7X is a 60 inch chest. It's quite a loose fitting dress, again, so waist and hips don't seem to matter quite as much in terms of the, the size that you choose because you can bring it in on the waist using the gorgeous ties at the back and then it just skims over your hips. It's such a lovely shape. Um, so my first version, I saw this Rayon Shelley lawn come up on Truro Fabrics on my Instagram um, account and I just loved it and they actually had both of them in the Instagram picture and I couldn't choose so I thought <laughs> and I wanted to make a twirl of this to check sizing and things so I thought why not also have a go at colour blocking at the same time <laughs> so I did end up making this um, as a colour block version you can just see there's the beautiful pack um, with the ties so I made that in black, white, and then the black. So black on the outside and white on the inside and did the same down the front. And then I made my own uh, covered buttons just because I thought there was quite enough going on with the colour blocking without adding different buttons as well. Um, so I was between the medium and the small in terms of the sizing. But again, because of the issues I have with narrow back adjustments and small bust adjustments, I went for the small and that fit really well um, and again I can bring it in a little bit on the back with the with the waist tires so it seems to be a really really good fit so I'm really happy with that didn't have any other fitting issues it was a beautiful straightforward make the only issue I did have was that in the pattern that says that 5 8 inch seam allowances have been included but then on the uh, YouTube video sew along which was so helpful I can really recommend that I will include it down below in the comments uh, description box and um, I so I used the sew along and that talked about a 3 8 inch seam the whole way through so I was slightly confused so I started out using a 5 8 inch seam allowance like it said in the pattern but I actually switched to a 3 8 inch seam allowance which seemed to fit better with the markings and the notches and everything else so I'm not quite sure uh, which one is correct um, but I did use a 3 8 inch for this make and for my next Hughes dress and that seemed to work perfectly and like I say fit with all the notches so that was just a bit of confusion at the beginning but it's fine in the end and like I say the rest of the instructions are so so good and um, they really hold your hand and the sew along video again is just really really helpful in terms of just some of those um, little trickier details like inserting 
the um, the ties at the back and lining the dress as well so in the video she goes through how to fully line the bodice which is really helpful because that's my preference is to fully line bodices rather than use facing I just find the way facing flips and flaps about really annoys me so <laughs> I much prefer to line my bodice if I can so that's what I've done so I don't know if you can see I just used a very um, a simple lining fabric that I just had in my stash um, and I've just sewn that and I hand sewed that into the sleeve seam so that everything is enclosed and then added a Kylie in the machine label um, at the end so that's that version again the viscose is so soft and really really lovely I think I'm not sure I mentioned that's from Truro Fabrics again I'll link it below if they still have it but it's really soft and I'm really looking forward to getting some wear out of that when the weather warms up the second Hughes dress that I made was part of the fruity sewing challenge run by Blossom Sandwich over on Instagram. I actually saw this fabric on um, the rag shop, which is one of my favorite fabric shops, but I actually saw it advertised over there on Instagram and I just fell in love. It just looked like such a beautiful linen. And so it was actually on the way to me when I saw Blossom Sandwich's um, challenge come up. So I thought that was quite fun. So I did end up um, sewing this up and entering into that challenge on Instagram. But again, such a lovely fabric that's got pineapples all over it, which is so much fun. But also it's just such a lovely soft linen, which again, I really wanted to try a linen fabric, especially with the summer coming. And I just thought it would work really well with the Hughes dress. I managed to find some, I don't know, the camera will pick it up some pineapple buttons on at Minerva Craft, which I thought matched really, really well. The beige kind of just matched so nicely. I don't know how you have found it during lockdowns, where you are. I know I found it really hard to match buttons and thread and things like that, but I was so delighted when these arrived from Minerva and they seemed to be a really good match. So that's those pineapple buttons. Um, yes. So that one I, sim I made straight in a size small, again I used the 3 8 seam allowance and once again I lined the bodice fully and um, I just used, another, um, I've got just a, a heap of plain white cotton in my stash which I buy for lining my daughter's dresses sometimes. So just use that to line it and yeah, it's a lovely fit. I'm really looking forward to getting some more out of that in the summer. So this next section of the video is about the things that I've made for my children this month. The first thing I made for my daughter was the festival dress by Tada Patterns. Uh, I cut things out. I don't usually use the cutting guides. I know that's really bad to admit, <laughs> but I usually just um, try and fit everything in as small of an amount of fabric as I can, play a bit of pattern Tetris, because uh, I quite like to see if I can get another project out of the same piece of material. <laughs> it doesn't always work, but this time it worked beautifully and I had, I think it was just a little under a meter of the fabric left. So I thought it was just too beautiful of a linen to pass up um, using the rest of it or just adding it to my um, stash. So I decided to use it to make this dress for my daughter. So this pattern is called the Festival Dress and it is by Tada Patterns. Um, this is the version I've got, I think they've since updated their logo and things, so it might look slightly different now. But that's the pattern that I have got. It is uh, a pattern that goes from sizes 1 to 12. It's a huge um, a number of sizes there, which is great because it means I can make it for her again and again and again. Um, it also has an incredible number of options with the dress. I don't know if you can see that here, but you can do all these different backs. And then you've got a V front, you've got like a semicircle front, and I think you've just got the plain, you can see it here, the plain front. And then you've got flutter sleeves. I think there is like a sleeveless version from memory. And I think, I can't remember if there's a capped sleeve version. Um, but yes, there are definitely four different backs. A bias tie back, a bow back, a button back, and a modesty back. So I chose to go with the flutter sleeves, as you can see here, and the V at the front. 
um, I used the white cotton that I had lined the other one with because I didn't quite have enough but also I just thought it would make a bit of a feature of that V and then on the back I made the this I think that was the modesty back with um, just some poppers again that I had in my stash um, I didn't quite have enough of the pineapple buttons left over because that would have been cute but also poppers for children is easy so there we go just to use the poppers um, I absolutely loved making this one um, I make quite a lot of children's dresses and clothes so I have followed quite a few patterns before in the past and I thought these instructions were superb uh, especially with how to get this beautiful precise V on the front I've never done it the way that they tell you how to do it in these instructions and it was so much fun to do especially when it worked out so beautifully so I can highly highly recommend Tadar patterns I have another um, couple of dresses from them that I'm really keen to try for my daughter um, but I will definitely be making this one again this one was also on my make nine I did make a make nine for my children um, of patterns that I really wanted to sew for them and this was on my make nine for my daughter so I'm really glad I got this one made up for her and I will definitely be making it again I can highly highly recommend that one I also just love it because of this, the number of variations that you get included with the pattern I always love that because you could make the same dress and it will look completely different <laughs> so as you can tell that was definitely a favorite make of mine this month um, and it will be fun to be able to twin with her <laughs> in the garden the last of my makes from April that I would like to share with you today are some shirts that I made for my sons so I have two boys aged well one's just turned eight and four and my little girl is one she's going to turn two soon um, so I wanted to make something nice for them for Easter I have always loved heirloom sewing and classic shirts and dresses on little people but I don't always love the hefty price tag that comes with them um, and my mother always used to smock for us as children and so that was something I really wanted to learn how to do was to smock and to make children's clothing when I had my own children and I've just really really enjoyed it um, now obviously I can't dress my children up in classic heirloom clothing every day as much as I would love to but <laughs> at times like Easter and Christmas I can persuade them into shirts now I, I really love the way mandarin collar shirts look on my boys so when I was doing my children's make nine that was one of the things that I put on my make nine was um, a mandarin collar shirt and I found this pattern for these shirts so I'll hold up one of them for you um, that's my older son's one and I found the pattern for these uh, over at Birda um, I'll put up a picture here of them wearing them in the garden um, and it's Birda style 145 I think it came as part of a pack originally I just found it on their website it was only as a PDF and the pattern does go from ages 1 to 8 but the sizing is relatively small so I did make the size 8 I believe for my older boy and he's quite slim boy I normally make him size 7 and things but he definitely needed the size 8 and it's a good fit it should fit him through the rest of the summer which is nice but yeah the sizing I, I thought it was slightly on the small side I also found the instructions really difficult to follow they were very basic instructions um, but I didn't find the way that they were written particularly easy to follow um, probably also compounded by the fact that I haven't made a shirt before so I've made lots of rompers and um, yeah sort of more um, things for when they were babies but I have not yet tackled shirt making so probably that was part of it as well was my inexperience in terms of shirt making so I just found things like the button placket on the sleeves and that one looks okay but um, I found that quite tricky and the, the trickiest thing for me was installing this button placket in the front the mandarin collar itself actually went in remarkably smoothly but then again I had to cut some length off it I think the other thing I didn't like was that you had to add a seam allowance to the pattern pieces which I have never done before and I'm lazy so I don't like doing that <laughs> but once I'd worked that out and I added the seam allowance and I cut it all out it was fine um, but yes I also added of course this is my younger son's version in a darker cotton because he enjoys getting a bit more messy <laughs> I added these made by mummy labels by little rosy cheeks which I absolutely love um, to his shirt I had fun playing with the stripes on this one I think this was the second one I made so I felt a bit more confident I just kind of put the instructions instructions aside and kind of just went went with it 
um, and I enjoyed playing about with the stripes a bit more in this one, so I did the yoke at the back going that way and the stripes going downwards. Um, I'm really pleased with how they look but I think I would possibly try a different pattern next time so I will link some down below that I would try um, based on my experience with Tadar patterns I would love to try one of their shirt patterns I think they've got one called the Troop shirt that looks like a bit more of a traditional collared shirt with a pocket so I'm not sure how confident I feel doing proper collars but given how brilliant their instructions were I would definitely give that one a try the other one I saw was on a beautiful website called Citronelle which I think are French patterns and there are a number of beautiful shirt options for boys on there so I would love to make them shirts again but I think I will try a different pattern next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching today if you made it this far um, there were a lot of things to share with you um, April seemed to be quite a busy month. If you did enjoy today's video please do uh, subscribe below and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I send out a new video. I'm hoping to film my plans for May shortly um, and that will hopefully be up next week. Um, but yeah, please do let me know in the comments what you made in April or what your favourite make was that I shared today and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye!